Uber CEO Dara Khosr Shahi just sat down to do an interview with the Wall Street Journal. So let's break it down. Hey everyone, Chris here for the Rideshare Guy. And today we're going to be breaking down exactly what happened with Dara and Jason Anders on the Wall Street Journal and show you the video as well as a breakdown of it. So let's get going. So this is a four minute interview, so it won't be too long or anything. And I'm gonna stop it between certain points and just kind of give my thoughts on this. And then if you have any thoughts while watching this, make sure to comment below. Let's talk about California, where we all are in spirit, if not um, actually today. So two weeks from today, California voters will go to the polls um, and vote on a ballot initiative called Proposition 22. Uh, Dara, there's also a presidential election that day. I'm not sure which of these you're gonna be following more closely. Um, I suspect a lot of folks know the background here, but for those who don't, last year, the state legislature passed a law that basically would, would require companies like Uber and others to, to reclassify their drivers and other workers as employees rather than independent contractors. And um, you know that could have a significant impact on labor costs. Uh, Prop 22 um, would uh, aim to preserve those folks as independent workers, but give them some uh, level of benefits at the same time. So um, first off, is it going to pass? And what's your plan if it doesn't? Well, uh, I can't predict whether it passes. I'm certainly hopeful uh, in terms of the trends of what we're seeing. And, and I think the, the, the good news for us as it relates to Prop 22 is that now, real quick, before we get going on more, there is some updated poll information, how much this prop is costing these companies, and a few other tidbits of great information about Prop 22, about AB5, at the rideshareguy.com, which I just done a video recently on when it's talking about some of the updates to Prop 22. So if you want to check that out, and again, the most up-to-date information, Make sure you check out that article as well. At drivers are on our side. By four to one margin, drivers uh, are behind Prop 22. Yes, on Prop 22. The vast majority of our drivers drive uh, part-time 20, 30 hours a week. Uh, and, and they're not full-time drivers. And they want the flexibility that comes with uh, being an IC. So I, I think we are kind of standing on the side of right here. Uh, and usually the right wins. Uh, so we're hopeful as far as Prop 22 goes. If Prop 22 does not... Now, just to go back to the article real quick of what I have mentioned before, there was a poll taken and also several other polls that pretty much show the exact same thing. The vast majority of drivers do want to say yes on 22, while a small amount of drivers would say no on 22. The only difference is this isn't up to just drivers. This is up to everybody in the state of California. So it's a much different number when you have 30 million people that could be voting. And it's also being a presidential election year. So that means there's going to be even more people that are out to the polls. They have been spending a lot of money to try to get a yes on 22. And these companies are throwing tons of money at it. Not when um, we will do our best to adjust uh, we're in a competitive marketplace, so I don't want to talk too much about uh, what that will look like. But our expectation is that prices are going to go up significantly uh, in cities in which there will be an operation and many, many cities that would have access to Uber or competitive services will no longer have access to. Are, are you considering a scenario where you simply don't? Now. He's been saying this, Lyft has been saying this, that prices would rise significantly, where it could be hundreds of percent more depending on the area, as well as some areas would not even be operational when it came to what Uber and Lyft are offering when it comes to rideshare. And so this has been said many times. Now, if you want to do a comparison, there isn't really much when it comes to an entire state saying you have to make your drivers employees like AB5 is trying to codify that. But one of the things is you could look at New York City where there's scheduled shifts, there's minimum wage, and there was restrictions to getting access to driving at certain times and things like that or certain areas. And then also how much did prices really rise there? And it wasn't as much. So there's some difference of opinion when it comes to what's actually going to happen. Uh, either way, 
prices will probably rise, but by the amount they're saying, maybe not. It might be, uh, but we'll see what happens if that ends up being the case. Or competitive services will no longer have access to. Are, are you considering a scenario where you simply don't operate in California? Uh, we're looking at all scenarios. Um, and again, it's a competitive marketplace, so, so I don't want to talk too much. We will make the adjustments, and we have been absolute in saying that we are going to comply by the law. All right, so real quick right there, that was a pretty interesting thing. Again, they're saying that they could potentially pull out of California. Now, California is their largest market, and it's the birthplace in San Francisco where their headquarters has been. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see exactly what could play out if Prop 22 fails. And again, a new court order said they had 30 days just a few days ago to make their drivers employees. So after the election, which is November 3rd, they'll have about 18 days to really make that decision. And it could be them pulling out. It could be them shutting down in certain markets. And it could just be a few different things all around. But I want to know what your thoughts are as well. Do you think they would leave the state of California for a little while, for a much longer while, while they're trying to adjust to making drivers employees? Or do you think they're going to be able to pull it off? Or do you think Prop 22 is actually going to pass? Make sure to comment below. If Prop 22 does pass and you're able to operate in that framework, your costs would still go up though, right? Do you can you give us a sense of, of how much your costs would increase if it passes? Yeah, listen, the the majority of our costs, the vast majority of our costs is actually driver earnings, right? Uh, and prices would go up, we estimate between 25 and over 100%, depending on what city you are. Uh, in larger cities, let's say San Francisco and LA, price, price increases would be in the 20, 30, 40% range. And in certain smaller cities, price increases would be uh, 70, 80, a hundred percent. Those are the estimates that we have. And, and, you know, these are not kind of made up estimates. We actually have, for example, um, a, a live lesson in Geneva where last month a court ruled in Switzerland to prohibit independent work as far as couriers went. Um, that resulted in 77% of couriers, uh, essentially being out of work. Uh, so a huge, you know, not only prices, uh, prices go up, but uh, vastly fewer uh, people have access to income and work opportunities during a time when having income and having flexible work opportunities we think is absolutely paramount. So we think the law is a poor law and we think the timing couldn't be worse. All right. So that is a pretty interesting statement when they're talking about what is going on in Switzerland and a couple of things there. So that is kind of, I guess, an insight to what it could look like. Now, Uber has been saying pretty much the same thing over and over again. I know there's been a few drivers out there who are saying they're using it as scare tactics or fear tactics and try to uh, bend the will of the state of California or the people in California to vote one way or the other. Uh, could there be some truth to this, though? It's, it's very possible. I mean, if they're going to look at having scheduled shifts like X amount of hours that you can drive, if they're going to do all full-time positions, that's going to shut the door on a lot of people. If they do positions where it's not full-time and you're only allowed to access the platform 25, 30 hours or so, that's going to be up to Uber, Lyft's, these other companies' discretion as well, too. So it's going to be kind of how they see is what's best for their own company because they want to make sure they're going to maximize their amount of profits and then they're going to kind of let the pieces fall in line, at least what it seems. So they're probably looking at many different scenarios, but kind of picking just a couple on what's going to happen. So even though some of it might sound like scare tactics, I would still put it in the back of your head saying, could this actually happen? Could this be real? And think about that. Uh, pin you down one last moment here, Dar, on this. So bottom line, though, is if, if Prop 22 does not pass, you're saying you're considering all your options, and one of those options could well be not operating in California? We are looking at all of our options. Listen, we're in the transportation business, so we're going to do our best to operate in California. 
uh, where in California we can operate is a question mark and the size and scale of the business will be substantially reduced. So now that last question just kind of was what was asked earlier and what he had said. And some people say, well, this is just scare tactics to try to show that Uber and Lyft have so much power that they can flex their arm and, you know, bend the will of California government and things like that. Well, that could be true. But remember, they're a publicly traded company. So the things that they go on record and say and could potentially impact the price of the stock and its shareholders and stakeholders they have the fiduciary responsibility to make profit for the shareholders and stockholders. So again, anything they say on record, especially during these interviews, is something that you really want to pay attention to because, yeah, they could be using it to kind of gain some sort of ground or try to you know, maneuver or manipulate a certain viewpoint or anything like that, but it could also be very true. Now, they said we have many options on the table. That was just one or a couple of them. So they probably have a lot of different options. They're just saying that as an extreme. But if Prop 22 passes, they're probably not going to be worrying about that because Prop 22 will essentially put AB5 in the rear view. But if Prop 22 fails, then it's going to be something where they're going to have 18-ish days left to make their drivers employees in California due to that court order. And they're probably going to appeal it. They're probably going to do it a number of different things. It's going to be a very long battle even after that. So there's going to be a lot of different things going on there. But one of the things is that could they shut down for a temporary time? It's very possible, especially if they don't have the ability to change over drivers to employees yet they could pull out for a temporary time they could also have the ability to make drivers employees if they've been kind of secretly or kind of doing this in the back end where people don't really know because they don't sell everything when it comes to these interviews uh, so there's a lot of different things still that's going to be up in the air and it's going to really come down to november 3rd with the election and whether you vote yes or no on Prop 22. And again, if you're looking for some really good information on Prop 22, some of the latest poll numbers of what it looks like, how much money is being spent for yes on 22 versus no on 22, as well as what some other drivers are saying, what other people are saying about Prop 22, about AB5, go and check out the Rideshare Guys article on Prop 22 because it has a lot of information there. And it's being updated as new information is coming out. And now I'd like to hear from anything you have to say when it regards to this interview or Prop 22 overall. Make sure you comment below and give a little bit of answer or reasons why you're choosing one over the other or some of the thoughts that you had when it came to the reaction of Dara's interview. Now, if you like this type of reaction video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up because it'll let us know to make more of it. And also, if you haven't hit that subscribe button of the Rideshare Guy, make sure you do because there's new videos every single week talking about what's going on, all the newest updates, information, and news. Make sure you do that. All right, everyone, drive safe.